You seem to be having a lot of emotional outbursts lately. Are you sure you're not on any drugs? Uh, just beer. Beer's a drug. You know who says shit like that? Who? Heroin addicts. The fuck, man? <laughs> like, on their way to rehab. They're like, you know, this is a drug beer. Or at the intervention. <laughs> fuck you, Aunt Linda. Caffeine's a drug. I saw you have a coffee this morning, you junkie bitch. <laughs> Speaking of coffee. <laughs> Jesus. Today's episode is brought to be brought to you by you, our listeners. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash valleyboyspod. Throw us five bucks. We use it to buy beer. So far this week, we've got shitty Jimmy v-, v. Hyde two times. Our gay dads, shitty Dino and shitty Tom. As always, thanks for the support. Shitty Bill got drunk again and bought us five. We also got shitty Melissa, shitty Alex, shitty Ryan, shitty Ivan, and shitty Jackson. Thanks a lot, you guys. So, Trump is gone, and Biden is now officially your president. Oh, uh, cheating fucking Biden. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> He's already coming in. <laughs> Winning Biden. Bullshit. He's coming in with his commie ways, said he wasn't going to fucking do anything like that, and then he just comes in and just starts writing crayon all over fucking Trump's executive orders on doing all the work of God that Trump did. <laughs> Hold on, the but, work of God? <laughs> yes. He came in. For the good Lord above and the American people. He was a patriot, Dave. Well, you see how that works then. If it's an executive order and he's he has the authority to sign something, somebody else can come in and undo it. Because that's what Trump did. He came in, undid a lot of Obama shit. In comes Trump. In comes Biden. Undoing all the Trump shit. That's yeah. how it goes. He was trying to keep us safe from the, the commie, uh, commie Russian Obama and uh, his little cohort, uh, you know, dipshit uh, Biden there. Jesus. Yeah, and how how did that work out for him? That has to be the best inauguration ever, ever since I started watching them, the first one with Obama. Uh, it was, Biden's was the least attended in history, so how about that? <laughs> you know, that's t- probably technically true. Um, if, if Trump had his Twitter, that's what he'd be saying. <laughs> he'd be like, look at these shitty numbers. <laughs> There's not even anybody there. <laughs> hey, you know who was at the inauguration, though? Lady Gaga. Yeah, well, that her too. And Ted Cruz. So what? Ted's jumping ship? <laughs> no. Shitty lion Ted. No, it's amazing I, they let him in there because you know he's Canadian. Well, well yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're shifty with their, uh, yeah, their beady eyes and their flapping heads. You got to watch out for them. <laughs> but no, the, the, the whole uh, the, the fact that everybody on the left was screaming, all oh, seditious, insurrectionist, well, whatever. They, they love their buzzwords and their fucking adjectives on the left and everything they can throw to the wall about Ted Cruz. And then there he is at Joe Biden's inauguration. And <laughs> Look, of course he's there. Of course he's there because he he's trying to protect his own future and his or his legacy, depending on what happens next. Yeah. He's trying to inherit Trump's base is what's going on. That's why he was supporting the idea of challenging the election results and that's why he's there now you know he's 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 trying to say i'm part of the game i know what's up i'm here i'm a participant but also charge the capital because he was the one saying shit like that too and and yeah bring him up on charges fuck him i mean if if, if he did something if, if they can make that stick go for it but he should just resign uh, Ted Cruz is a piece of shit. I will say this as a side note. He's from Texas, right? Or no, he's actually from Canada, but he's. he's which is why he's a piece of shit. Got he's, it. He's based in Texas. <laughs> okay. Now, w- you remember when he was running against Beto O'Rourke? Yes. Now, think about this. And this is something about the both sides. And I hate to be the both sides guy, but you have Rafael Cruz versus um, what's, what's Beto O'Rourke's real name? Fuck Robert. Mark. Robert, Robert yeah. O'Rourke. That yeah. is the whitest sounding name ever. Yeah, and then Rafael right. Cruz. Shit. Rafael Cruz is not. It's exotic, man. A white name is what I'm saying. So he made it whiter for his base by going by Ted. And Robert O'Rourke went by Beto to try and win over the Democrats. All I'm saying is that everyone fucking panders. But it's too bad that we didn't have Beto. No, oh, that guy's a dipshit. Anyhow, you're better off without him. Best I thing about him. him was his fucking skateboard. Yeah, but he, he's a goofy shit. And he used to uh, be in a band with the dude from uh, Mars Volta and at the drive-in. Oh uh, well, I mean, there you go. Like that's already. pretty cool. Uh, I mean, not that that qualifies someone to be in politics, but it, you know, it shows somebody has a worldly background. You know, traveling the country in a shitty van. 
I, I guess, man, but like he was white as shit when he came out and did interviews. Like he tried to tried to act cool doing the whole fucking skater thing, but then he would just come out and speak like the whitest man that you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> I know, and that's that's kind of what I'm saying, how he still went by Beto and Ted went by Ted instead of Raphael. Anyways. Whatever. Uh, well, Fuck them. So what are what are your predictions for this year and the next in the future? Uh, Predictions well, for 2021. What do you got? Well, we'll, we'll see if uh, Biden doesn't get us nuked or uh, otherwise uh, wiped off the map uh, before the end of the year. But if it doesn't, my uh, my first one that I see coming is Trump's uh, trial is getting ready to start probably in a week and a half in the Senate. He's going to get acquitted, and then he's going to announce his new whatever party he wants to call it. Call it the Freedom Party. That sounds fucking good. That's something you can throw in a bumper sticker. And uh, he will announce his 2024 bid for president of the United States. <clears throat> so you're predicting he gets fully acquitted like last time? Oh, I guarantee it. Like they they don't have the votes because they have to they have to have a two thirds majority, which means they need 67 yes votes. And they're and not right gonna... now the Senate is 50 50 with Kamala as a tiebreaker, but that's not enough. No, because they need 17 Republicans to jump ship, and there's not enough of those. Maybe maybe uh, Mitt Romney, maybe Murkowski, Susan Collins, the people that usually kind of, you yeah, know. Yeah, but old man McConnell, he's shifted his tone. You know, he's turtling back. Yeah. Because, like, compared to what he was the last time they impeached him, because I think if the GOP was smart, they would convict him because he's going to be a thorn in their side forever. Oh, he's he's going to be a thorn in their side no matter what. Like even if Trump doesn't run, like he can push one of his kids, Don Jr. Whatever. Yeah, maybe, but it's not the same power as as him. And I think that if they were smart, they would get they would get rid of him and eliminate him from the playing field. Because I think if he were to run again, it's impossible to say what's going to happen between now and the next four years. But if the election were held, let's say tomorrow, yeah, with within the Republican Party, he'd probably fucking win. Well, uh, yeah, and. But Win the nomination, I mean, not the presidency. But that's the thing. Like Trump's the type of guy he'll find a way around problems like that. And the the easiest one would be to have Don Jr. run, but Trump would be the face of everything. He would get out there and speak. He would get out there and do the rallies. Don Jr. would stand beside him, get patted on the head a couple times by Trump, and he would be a figurehead president if he got elected because everybody would be going out there knowing full well Trump would be the one in charge. So I could see Trump doing something like that if he does get convicted, but it, it's highly unlikely. So uh, what do you what do you have on your predictions so far for 2021? Well, I didn't really think about it that much, to be honest. But as far as the impeachment goes, it's a toss up. Like I said, they'd be smart to do it. They'd be smart to convict him. Um, no, no martyrdom, martyrdom syndrome. Like, you know, he gets convicted and. The, his side is just that much more emboldened? No, because if that happens, the, like I said, the election is not held tomorrow. The primaries aren't held tomorrow. If it was, different story. But in four years from now, so much is going to come out about him as a president. Like even just today, they were talking about how um, his vaccine rollout is complete shit. Like they thought when they, when they inherited that, uh, there was some kind of plan. There wasn't. They're saying this is, we have to start again. Because there's nothing there. He had no plan. And again, it's not him. It's his administration. I understand that. But it's still under his rule. So there's going to be things like that that come up constantly. Not to mention all the criminal activity that if, if we're being real, whether or not it's justified or, or it counts or whatever, between his personal life and as president, every single thing he's ever done is going to be coming back. They're going to be going after him for tax problems, for real estate, bad, you name it. It's all going to be coming out in the next four years. And bit by bit people are going to lose support for him. And it's really hard to be supportive of somebody that you don't actually hear from because he's off social media. Mm -hmm. You remember that they were talking about him being like you were describing earlier with his son, him being the quote unquote shadow president. Yeah. Uh, it, basically he's still puppeteering Republicans, but just from Twitter and social media. Um, so I think, I think the Trump flame is going to die out especially over the next four years. I don't think he'll have a chance, even if he's not convicted. He's done. Uh, with the left, I think Biden, it looks like he's actually delivering his promises. And that's my problem. <clears throat> See, Andrew Santino tweeted this a couple months ago, He's or after Biden won. He's like, if you think I'm not going to make fun of Biden, you're 
dead ass wrong. I mean, yeah. I'm paraphrasing, but that's exactly it. And I agree with that a thousand percent. I've been saving some good old Biden jokes. And I'm not crazy about a Biden presidency, if I'm being real. Well, I, and most people weren't. It, 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 there's a few people that give a shit, but everyone else was just voting to get Trump out. Right. And he is the lesser of two evil evils, which is a horrible cliche. Uh, they call that strategic voting when you're just voting for the person you really don't want. That's not exactly a democracy, but given what we have, I think I think Biden is going to live up to his promises because if there's one thing that he is, it's a panderer. And I'm counting on that. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little scared of Kamala. She is no friend to progressives. So my prediction is Biden's actually going to follow through with these promises. I also predict over the next four years, he's going to step down uh, maybe at the end of his term and Kamala is going to kind of take her, take his place mm -hmm. uh, running in four years. And the DNC is going to rally behind her. Well, yeah, they wouldn't have any choice. Of that. Like right. they, they're pigeonholed into that ticket. Like that's what, whether Biden runs again or mm -hmm. whether the, the torch is passed, like they're, they're stuck with that good, bad or indifferent. Like she would really, there'd have to be some horrible shit. Well, horrible shit already did come about way no worse about it yeah 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 um, no one seemed to care about it and whenever i speak about it to, to kamala supporters it, they either don't know about it or or are able to justify it with some bullshit reasoning to be honest and i'm not calling anyone out specifically but it's like she kept people in prison that were exonerated on the federal level for the sake of profit yeah cheap like, labor for the yeah. for the prisons it was that's brought out scary. on national tv and the well she and she dipped she dipped in the polls, but then after she was out of the limelight and then Biden comes along and announces her as VP, everyone's like, oh, Kamala, this is so great. I'm like, she literally did not get a single delegate in the primaries, which is why she dropped the fuck out. She dropped the fuck out because everyone learned what a piece of shit she was when she was in California. So I'm going to ask you this question. Okay. So that it's on you and not on me, because I'm sure we'll have the same answer. Do you think that Kamala would have been picked for the VP had she been anything but a female woman person of color uh no i mean uh, we already know that biden announced he was going to pick a woman knowing that it's the democratic party and they they fucking love to pander which uh, jesus christ joe did it the entire fucking time he's on the campaign trail so i mean i i i can't imagine Tol tulsi is a woman of color he could have named her she had better policies in kamala and no uh, track record of uh bullshit she did tulsi got the raw end of the deal on that well ever anyone well so that's the thing when you use the term left to, is biden to the left of trump yeah in the same way that stalin was just a little bit to the you know left of adolf hitler right you, you know so technically yes but like i said with the biden administration uh it, you're getting george w bush's third term with lgbtq1a plus and uh blm but that's what i'm talking about he's a panderer he's I, i'm not saying it's pedophile for the right. and flanderer yeah. no no yes no glad we agree that's some dumb bullshit conspiracy theory q and on horse shit but i think he's consistent with keeping up with what people want and the problem is he's been around for so long that when when things weren't as progressive he was championing the left side for lack of a better term in today's world, that would be considered to the right, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, it, but he, he's already he's already living up to his promises. I gotta say, it's he's a day, already it's living a day up to and that. a half. He is some executive orders. It, fine, like, and, and I'll give him I'll, I'll give him that. Like the the good things that he's done up to this point. I'll I'll you know yeah. If he comes through on on some of the shit that he says, I'll you know I'll eat my uh, eat my fucking words on it. Mm -hmm. But he does have a track record, and it's usually to the right. I mean, if you look at his voting patterns, the whole busing thing, like he was against it until he started doing town hall meetings with his constituents who were all white suburbanites and then found out, oh, well, this isn't very popular. They don't want black people to go to our schools. So what did he do? He, he worked with Strom Thurmond and uh, I forgot who the other guy is, um, segregation of senators to pass that legislation that was in the 70s right mm -hmm. long time ago all right well let's move into the 80s and what did he do he had that bill the anti-drug bill in 1986 and again he worked with strom thurman on that as well and that was supposed to help alleviate you know the influx of 
crack into the country and onto the streets and the inner cities. Well, what that did was get a whole lot of black people arrested and put in jail for bull, like bullshit terms for what they were actually arrested for. <laughs> then you move into the 90s in the crime bill. That's been covered multiple times. It wasn't the reason that black people started going to jail, but it didn't fucking help. Like, disproportionately affected the black community again. 2000s, voted for the Iraq War. That's a Republican resume right there. Like, that's that that's not champion of the people. That's, again, George W. Bush. I agree. I agree. I 100% agree. However, the Democratic Party has since shifted to the left uh, more so because of trump trump created further division but also everyone's running further to one side than they were before i well, there's really nobody nobody on this planet in this country is 100 percent left or 100 percent right because if you are you're a psycho right if you push people on issues you'll you'll find out what, that you'll have more in common with uh, especially the average person than not and that's uh, a crazy thing what what people want versus what's voted in doesn't seem to matter because again i know i've said this before but if you want to fix this country the first thing you need to eliminate is money in politics and i'm talking about very, it's a very specific thing do not let corporations fund campaigns that's it it's yeah. start there first thing even trump Trump said he was going to do that, and he didn't. He had four years. He didn't do that. So um, if you want to fix, it, it doesn't matter what it is. The reason we can't have Medicare for all, uh, especially under the current plan, the... the Well, that and Joe Biden said he wasn't going to uh, run on it. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> Even though he has now the Senate and the House, but or the uh, Congress... But that's the reason that uh, Obamacare never can work is because one, one talking point that Republicans love is that, okay, if, if we were to give every single American all the medical attention they'll need, it's going to cost us X amount of trillions of dollars, which is true because the, Medicare, the, the medical industry is the Wild West. They're allowed to do what they want. You need to regulate that industry and do what Medi-Cal does. Here in California, when something gets billed to Medi-Cal, which is... It's Medicaid. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a state Medicaid program is what it is. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they tell the hospitals, no, nah, we know how much that shit costs. We know how much you're going to make off of it. Here's what you get. Fuck you. Yeah. And that's what they need. They need that three-dimensionally. They need to put regulations on it. They need to say, we know how much profit you're making. You're, instead of making hundreds of billions, you're only going to make tens and tens of billions. Dozens of billions, you know? Yeah. Well, and that, But that's the concept of single-payer health care. Right, which they do in Canada. They do in the UK. They do in Australia. And last time I checked, those places are doing just fine. They're not shithole through right. the world countries. But, hey, let's keep uh, let's keep uh, electing uh, corporatist uh, center-right Democrats and see if we can get that done this time. Exactly, exactly. And that was, whether you like to admit it or, admit it or not, one of the main appeals to Trump was, was that he was an outsider, is that he couldn't be bought. Do you remember that four years ago? That's what they kept saying. He can't be bought. Yeah. He doesn't need the money, and he didn't. When he was campaigning... They were obsessed with Trump, the the me, the right and left media. They would just give him all his free publicity. He didn't need those major corporate donations to push him to the top. Yeah, I mean he's evil as fuck. But it, but he it didn't was, need it, that. It was the idea, like it was a candidate that people, the people, were waiting to come along and rescue them from. The, the, the same old it's like all right hey this guy's wearing a suit with a blue tie this guy's wearing a suit with a red tie they're all promising jobs <laughs> and security and the same old shit and they get into office and none of it and so trump represented this idea that there was someone going in to fight for the people that's how he won everyone's trying to make it revisionist especially on the left saying well he stoked the flames of hate some people, yes, like a very small minority. The reason he fucking won is because he captured the American worker, the blue collar guy who's been fucked around for years by his own government. And now you have somebody who's not a politician coming in. Hey, I'm going to save you from these fuckers. That's 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 what was Trump's appeal. And the right. people were desperate even before the pandemic came along. I 100 percent agree that that was his appeal. I mean, as it turns out, that's not what happened, obviously. No, and I agree with that. I'm just 
it, it, just the idea of how he, you know, and how the next Trump, when the next Trump comes along. That's the thing. And, and AOC said that she's like electing Biden will will put a uh, bigger demand for a bigger Trump. And I agree with that. Although Biden has been so far with with 24 hours into his presidency, he has followed up on a lot of his promises. And I fucking I'm obviously I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for any president, really. But yeah. well, it, it's it, I think I think he's going to like I said, it all comes down to pandering. Well, and this it, is what the people want. And he's going to fucking deliver it. Well, and the, so, that's my prediction. That's what yeah. we're talking about. And the, and the, the executive orders are easy. The stuff that you can pass by executive order, obviously, you can do without right. Congress and the Senate. So that's mm-hmm. the easy part. Every president does it. Trump, Obama, Bush before him. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, and so they get off to a hot start. Oh, look, you know, he's actually getting something done. And then once you get in, you have to dig in. You have to start dealing with Congress and you have to start dealing with the Senate. Right. That, that's a different ballgame altogether. But And so how that works is y- you'll, you'll have to present something that is that both sides can sort of agree with and, or compromise on. And so with his immigration bill, for instance, he's saying that he doesn't give a shit about Republicans anymore because that was a big thing with the Obama when they introduced DACA was that they kept Republicans in mind. And this time around, all of the immigration advocacy groups that have gotten a hold of his plan say it's extremely ambitious and they're beyond thrilled about it. And if it actually passes, that'd be amazing. And yeah. it looks like he he's not giving a fuck about compromise. He's saying this is the humane thing to do, and this is what we're going to do. He's saying that 11 million people illegal in this country are going to get a pathway to citizenship. So for all of the undocumented people here now, they're going to get sort of a work permit type situation. And if they don't fuck that up, after five years, they can apply for permanent residency, which is what what people refer to as a green card. And then three years after that, they can apply for citizenship. To me, that is a solid fucking plan. And you know what's crazy about that? The majority of Republicans support that. Like Fox News even said 80% of Republicans, uh, maybe high 70s, whatever it was. Yeah, they're like the overwhelming majority of Republicans support a pathway to citizenship for undocumented people because then it puts them on the grid. It vets out the bad ones and it makes them pay taxes. Yeah. It's win, win, win for the country. If you're opposed to that idea, then you're racist. Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you that. So it's like, it's like your dad. Okay. I'm not, I'm not here to talk about shit that your dad says, but your dad has his opinion on immigration. And when I asked him about it, I said, well, what do you think of the immigration reform of 1986 that Ronald Reagan introduced? He's like, I think that's great. That, to me, proves that you're not racist. If, if you're willing to say, yeah, vet out the bad ones, you know, um, make them pay their taxes, then, yet, then it's not about not having brown neighbors because there are those people. Yeah. And those are the racists. But, and, and then everyone gets painted with the same brush, right? Of course. Anyways, that's my prediction. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, now that we got that uh, Ernest Hemingway novel. Uh, my next prediction is I'm going to get laid this year without paying for it. Okay. I realize that Biden won, which by no means is a miracle. But, Brandon, I don't think you know what you're asking. You know what you got to do? If you want to get no. laid, buddy, you got to put in some effort. Uh, and I don't mean sending a text at 2 a.m., being like, sup, girl? Bitch, I was thinking about you. Come get this dick. Yeah, you can't do that. You know, I'm getting messages saying your buddy Brandon is sending me the <laughs> these weird messages. That too. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh-oh. <laughs> David said we wouldn't talk about this on the podcast. No. They, they were meant for you. That's, that, you know, that's my problem. No, nobody but, said that. I mean, not not explicitly what I said, but. Hey, man, it's. it's uh, we got to do the win a date with Brandon. Or oh, lose, yeah. lose and get a date with Brandon. It's, yeah, it's something along there. It, you know, as long as I uh, get my pecker wet, that's the that's the important thing. Because there are girls out there that like you, and and what's what's really funny um, is when we started doing this podcast. One thing I told you was don't fucking. And this is before uh, the when when did the when I, no it was way after we started the podcast December of 2019. So this is way after the Me Too thing, but it has yeah. nothing to do with that. But I told you, don't be met. Be careful what you say to girls online. Like, don't be aggressive. Don't be whatever. 
I didn't, as it turns out, Brandon just ignores messages. Yeah. Because we have access to each other's accounts. We see shit. We have the Valley Boys. We have this, that. Brandon's getting messages from these girls left and right. And he doesn't do anything because I told him don't say anything. But I, what I meant was don't actively go after women and send weird messages at 2 a.m. I don't mean ignore everybody. If they send you a message, fucking go for it. Yeah. So, ladies, if you're into Brandon. And and you live in L.A., too. That, that, yeah, you got to live that, in L.A. That's, that's the important thing. Or close by. Yeah, no more. Uh, well, but you know what, though? The problem is your your fan base is typically, you know, Mississippi, Texas, Boston, you know. Um, so yeah. if you live in L.A., shoot him a message. Be like, what's up, Brandon? I want to go on a date with you, and he'll take you out. Just get a COVID test. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll drink only uh, the the finest shit beers uh, behind the Seven Eleven and uh, take you over to the uh, taco truck for Dutch uh, Dutch date. So, ladies, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry, I caused literally hundreds of panties to have to have been changed at one time. I realize that, and uh, I'm not sorry for it. Go ahead and send them. I want to see if this actually works. Um, send him a message, Brandon. Don't you, you don't have to be shy about girls that send you a message first. Just well, don't be. We- still, don't be weird. Don't flash dick or anything. But well, any weirder than normal. I, I told you that. Don't say anything. But I, I didn't mean don't reply. If they send you a message first, whatever. All right. Well, yeah, we yeah we need one of them California girls, Southern California, um, or right. a California man, a uh, little California man, buddy. And uh, speaking of, are you ready to play Florida, California, or Canada, man? Oh, shit. Yeah, we we're supposed to do this earlier in the podcast, but. Whatever. Know. We do whatever the fuck. We don't we really want. have any structure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're sitting here fucking drinking in the, the afternoon. Um, all right. So are you ready for the first one? Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'll explain the that... fucking rules to the goddamn slow people. All right, so if you're new to the podcast, uh, welcome. And uh, so with this game, it's quite simple. I'm going to read a headline, and it's Dave's challenge to tell me whether he believes that individual is from Florida, California, or Canada. All right, are you ready to play, sir? Yes. All right, first story. Man pleads guilty to assaulting flight attendants. (laughs) What is that? Florida man, California man, or Canada man? See, they always sound like Florida man. Well, but, I, I got to make them generic sometimes. Like, I, you know, if I talk about mountain climbing, that ain't going to be fucking Florida, you know. But the thing is, assault is such a broad term. I feel like if it was something wild, yeah, it would be specified as that, well, which, which to me eliminates Florida. Well, see, and that's the thing. Like, once I actually see the headlines and then I get in and read the story, like so many other clickbait articles, they give you a portion, but they leave words and details out. Uh, but... So, yeah, I mean, assault could mean a number of things. So just right. use your imagination here. Okay. I, I Like I said, if it was something crazy, it would be Florida, and they would specify what that was. So I'm eliminating that. I'm going to go with uh, with Canada because he pled guilty. <laughs> Actually, California, man. Close enough. Yeah. On a on a plane to New Mexico, which I can't relate Fuck to at all. Fuck that place. Fucking I hate can't. New Mexico. Fuck New Mexico. Okay, um, I, I certainly can't we relate had a bad to this time gentleman there. at all. Uh, but so yeah, he uh, he started like feeling up uh, one of the flight attendants like up and down her leg, and then uh, the story says it was perverted. It was sexual assault. Then I would have guessed California for sure, dude. That's why I'm reading the headlines. Like if I started giving you the whole fucking story, then you'd be able to deduce. Like you just have to guess off the headline. Uh, yeah. So then another. <laughs> So then another flight attendant comes along. He starts grabbing at her. He's like, oh, more candy. That's not funny, dude. That's kind of fucked up that you're laughing at that, to be honest. Oh, fucking liberal Dave there uh, with yeah, the yeah, crocodile tears, that shit. you bleeding heart fuck. Where's that guy from, Bakersfield? Uh, shit, I don't know, San Diego, I think it was. Uh, mm-hmm. The more sophisticated Bakersfield. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Ocean Beach. That's my little, I love that place. Yeah. All right, now moving on. Uh, man accused of setting his own truck on fire to give deputies, quote, something to do. What is that? Florida. California. Florida. Canada. Yeah. That is fucking Florida. I mean. <laughs> it, it, it absolutely was. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Yeah, sometimes I got to throw a gimme in there. Uh, yeah, not even process of elimination. Like in Canada, that would never happen. Yeah, same with same with here. I feel like, but Florida, that's just yeah. Okay, one hundred percent Florida. Now knowing it's a guy that set himself on fire, or is setting his uh, own truck on fire, and it was Florida. Would you be surprised to find out that meth was involved as well? <laughs> oh man, you don't say, buddy. <laughs> yeah, meth was involved. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, I, I, that's how you know it's Florida. You, any headline, there's meth involved if, if it's Florida. Even, like, Congress passes, oh, meth involved. Yeah, they, they don't even pass around, like, the, the, the little crackers at church. It's just a meth pipe. Everyone takes a hit. <laughs> and the wine's been replaced by uh, four locos. And they're all saying, well, technically, caffeine's a drug, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuckers. All right, and our last story. Man receives his own severed leg for Christmas. Is that Florida, California, or Canada? Okay. I mean, I think you would throw me a wrench and not do one of each, Florida, California, Canada. Because that's the thing. Again, if you're tuning in for the first time, it doesn't have all three of them could be from the same place. It's just those are the three options and it refreshes every time. Now in Canada, that would be a prosthetic leg provided by the government. His own severed leg yeah, as, his, his, as his a own, present? Yes. Like from another person? No, no. Like it, it, he, he got into an accident and then uh, his, his leg was severed and he basically got the remnants back. I mean, obviously this. Oh, God, that rot. is fucking Canada, dude. That's some Saskatchewan shit. Yeah, it, well, it's uh, definitely Canada. Let me. Uh, yeah, that's what they would do. Let me let me check. Exactly. Some three for three. What's up? Oh, no, no, no. I got the. Yeah, you fucking liar. All right. Uh, well, I didn't cheat this time. Usually I cheat. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's the thing. If you try to live a, live an honest life and uh, not cheat like uh, uh, creepy Joe Biden, then uh, you can go places in life. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I don't know where the fuck this guy Canada, whatever. Yeah, I feel like that's a Saskatchewan thing. But that's that's what your bros would do in Canada. It's like, oh buddy, you severed your leg in an accident, don't worry. I got it embalmed. <laughs> Here it is. And put like a little uh bowling trophy on top of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Fuck yeah. Yeah, bro, that's Canada all the way. <laughs> See any of that shit? Alright, buddy. And so, uh, so it's, uh, it's something we do every every week on the uh, podcast. If you're if you're new to it, uh, yeah, you can also send in headlines from Canada, California. Just don't send it to me because I won't tell Brandon that I already know because I like to cheat every single time. I didn't today. You saw me the whole time. Yeah. Usually I, I cheat, but if you send it to both of us, I'm gonna cheat. Don't do that for real. Don't do that. Send it to just Brandon. Yeah, kids, don't do drugs like caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so one of the other things I wanted to talk about before we get too too far away from politics and all that. Uh, so now that Trump is leaving office, there's obviously going to be a huge gap to fill, and that is in the comedy world. Because let's be honest, Trump was the what? lowest hanging of fruit. What for late? Yeah, dude, for fucking late night host. Uh, people on Twitter, what, what's uh, her they name? Don't count. Sarah Cooper got got herself over. They don't uh, count. Uh, None well, of that shit matters. I'll tell you something about comedy. The okay. only thing that matters is what you fucking spit on stage. That's how you determine whether or not somebody's funny. And people tell me that all the time. I could be sitting there minding my fucking business and someone comes up to me and says, taps me like, hey, I'm really funny. I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do with this knowledge? You're you right. Know? <laughs> and then, Thank you for uh, this gift. I've, apparently I've been missing my yeah. entire life. Me and my bro Garrett from Winnipeg, one of my... Uh, Guy I came up with in comedy, cut my teeth with, with him, and uh, the the this girl I was seeing, her and her friend would tell us all the time, we're funnier than you two, and we'd be like, okay, go on stage, like that's that's how that is how you know somebody's funny. If you're oh. talking about the comedy world, if you want to know whether or not you're funny, go on stage and make three hundred strangers laugh. If you can't do that, you're not funny. You know, you can maybe make some funny tweets like people do. So, like, and that's the kind of shit you're talking about. Well, you know? I, well, yeah. So, I mean, I, well, obviously, the, the the last year there there wasn't too much stand up comedy. But like, is there anyone you can think of like offhand who like started going like hardcore on stage with it? 
Because I know there's some Netflix and shit that specials that have come out. And yeah, all that. yeah, pre-established guys. Because that's that's kind of my problem. Like when Trump was running, a lot of very big names. I'm not going to say who. Yeah. But they would tell me, "Don't talk about politics. You're not there, buddy." Yeah. And and you do need to be at a certain level, I think, to really rip about politics. Sure. And I'd be like, I don't do that. I do it on Twitter, which is fine. Twitter is not the same as stand up. Yeah, no, no, and no, I, I I get that. So like did do you see anybody who's just gonna fade off into the sunset? Yeah. The the Twitter people. That's Sarah, what I'm saying. Like Sarah, the Twitter Sarah comedians. Cooper, Sarah Cooper's gone. Well, I mean who is she? She's the one who does the the lip the voiceovers, right? I guess. I, I I don't know. I think that's what it is. She she doesn't Yeah, yeah. She's the one who makes like videos of her sort of reenacting Trump speeches and millions of people love that shit. And she got a fucking Netflix special out of it. I don't know how that's going to work, but what what the hell do I know? I don't have a Netflix special. They've uh, turned me down four years in a row. <laughs> so, <laughs> even for the kids table. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but with the rest of them, yeah, there's, there's a whole segment of like, I'm not going to say alt comedy because that's not even what it is. Like, Everything comes down to what you say on stage. That's it. You're not a comedian unless you go on stage. If you tell funny jokes on the internet, you, you, that's what you are. And if if you base your whole identity on this is probably who you're talking about, people who who just make fun of Trump online, which it's tempting to do because it's so easy and everybody hates that guy. It's, you know, you get addicted to that uh to that engagement levels, but well, like in the late Yeah, no. they're going to fade off. Yeah, but like the late night. So I mean, talking about like people who are established. Like no, late, late night's night going to be fine. Uh, so that what the ratings aren't going to dip now? Because like uh, you guaranteed there there had to have been a contingency of people. Well, did they spike? Uh, it, well, everyone's ratings went up when Trump was in office. Like that. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh Les Moonve or whatever uh, the head of like CBS News. He actually said during like an earnings meeting that like Trump is bad for America, but he's great for CBS. So, like, just having Trump on, talking about Trump, I, I don't really... Their ratings have been in the shitter for a long time. No one's all about late-night TV. You know, that, that, that ship has fucking sailed after Carson and, and Leno were gone, pretty much. Yeah, but the Stephen Colbert's, Jimmy Kimmel's, like, I think you're talking about, I think it, it, it's going to be fine. Because, for the most part, other than shit that goes viral online, for the most part, they don't talk about trump as much as people think they do because the shit that goes viral are jokes about that sort of thing about you know trump sucks whatever um right and that's the but thing. no they're Those gonna are be the fine. videos that go viral right not, but not the, their normal shit right but it's not gonna care. define the show though they're still gonna have a good show those writers for the most part are fucking fantastic and if we're being real when it comes to late night They've got plenty of material with Biden. Fair. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As long as they're willing to cross that line. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, they, they definitely went a little easier on, uh, on Obama. I remember, but anyhow, all right, well, that's cool. I'd figure I'd throw that out there. Well, the thing that they don't talk about is like, it's, it's like when they, whenever they get serious on late night, that's how, you know, shit is bad. Fair enough. And, this whole thing with the Capitol Hill, I know we based the whole episode two two times ago about Capitol Hill, but this week I watched two separate, um, I watched two separate 15 minute sort of mini documentaries, like just whatever about the, uh, about the siege. One of them was from the New Yorker, check it out. And the other one was from the Washington Post and Washington compost. No, no, dude. Like, at the end of the day, it's video. Yeah. It's just video evidence. And that's what Republicans always tell me. They're like, it's peaceful. Look at this video. And it's a video of some guy peeing behind where everything happened. Um, it, the Capitol takeover was significantly worse than I thought. It, it was actually infinitely more severe than I could have imagined. Like, when you watch these videos, they were very violent. And I'm going to go as far as to say that every single person that went into the Capitol after they locked the doors are fucking terrorists because they smashed their way in. 
They yeah. literally murdered their way in. I don't think that's up for debate. I think Republicans have turned their back on no, that. No, we, we, we've, we've talked. We're on the same page as far as that goes. Like I know. I just I saw it. I saw uh, more detailed accounts of it. Yeah. And it's it's way worse than I thought it was. They were some violent motherfuckers. Yeah, and the, and this wouldn't have had to happen like had Biden not cheated, you know, in the election. <laughs> Fucking well, Biden. See, that's there the, he is again. Like you're joking, but that is exactly why they did it. And even when Trump was saying that's that's why I think he's. I mean, he didn't outright tell people to go and riot, but he did say that the election was stolen from us and we have to take it back. And we're going to go to the Capitol building and we're going to fight like hell. And I'm not I'm not saying he instructed them to break into the building, but that's what these these people interpreted. And they built gallows, yeah. like elaborate gallows with nooses, these huge wooden frames to what? Like, that's not symbolic. That's it's too functional. To yeah. be symbolic. Yeah, and, and and like I said, I mean, just yeah, to break things down, like from last uh, last week our conversation, I agree with you. They're all terrorists. There are people who uh, definitely went there to cause shit. They already knew what they wanted to do. There are people who went there with yeah, obviously a gallows somebody brought pipe bombs. Uh, so there were people who were dead set on creating you know havoc, mayhem, and death. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot mm -hmm. more than actually did happen. And they're pieces of shit. They are terrorists, and they should absolutely fully be prosecuted to the extent of the fucking law. Absolutely. Um, I recommend everybody watch what I, I, I can't remember. So it was the New Yorker, Washington, but whatever it was, I will post it on the Valley boys, Twitter account, by the way, follow us on there. Valleyboys.com or no, no, uh, twitter.com slash Valley boys pod yeah. with the little purple guys. I'll post it on there. You can watch it for yourself and then, Whatever. If you're still going to screech about Antifa, then you know what? Maybe you should wear a helmet to bed because these people have no excuse for what they did, but they still do. They're just like, oh, well, I was just going with the crowd. Oh, well, I was just, I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, not to go into my whole stand a bit about that, but that's that's what happens when 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 you let women in charge. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Who is it? Well, I, I assume they organized and did all the planning. And the men are like, "All right, we got to build a no. gallows." And the women that like, was were... that was a man thing. That was it was all men in there except for the one who got murdered. <laughs> yeah. Well, she was batshit crazy too. She like she was rear-ended the car of her ex ex's girlfriend multiple. It's a whole bunch of crazy shit. Plus, if you got someone pointing a fucking gun at you, telling you to stop, and yeah. and like you, you continue going like. When there's elected officials on the other side. Yeah, if you're to, at the Capitol building and trying to break in and, and Capitol police are saying, if you don't fucking stop, I'm going to shoot you. Yep. She had every opportunity to live. Yeah. But what could she do? She's a Sagittarius. Oh, f <laughs> sad times. But whatever. Um, I So, like, uh, I mean, it's almost like a religion, though. It, it, it's it instead of God and the Holy Trinity and all that shit. It's like, uh like Venus is in line with uh my butthole and I've I've had like just the nastiest farts and that tells me <laughs> that like it's time to get out there and start dating again. Oh, you're talking about a star I thought you were talking about like QAnon. I mean same thing. Sure. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they, I mean that's how my stand up album starts, which I haven't released. I recorded it four years ago. But it starts off with that exact sentiment, which is uh horoscopes the zodiac all that shit it's just an excuse to do crazy shit and it's people waiting for something awesome to happen that just won't you know it's like oh like i'm a virgo and my horoscope says good things are coming my way all i got to do is nothing yeah like, hey, shut the fuck up that's some great news you know what else is great news is that it takes liberals four years to uh do anything from when they started which means biden ain't getting shit done america's saved <laughs> Well, speaking of the Zodiacs, I got to say, I'm not 100% convinced you're not the Zodiac killer. We're bringing that back. Brandon yeah, is yeah, the, my, my conspiracy, my QAnon. If Jesus you're part of that Christ. QAnon shit, please spread it around that Brandon is the Zodiac killer. There's no proof that he isn't. Prove to me that he's not. I was still shit myself in a fucking diaper. In when, 1968? Really? The Zodiac killer went in the 80s, too? No. 
It was Which in it? the 60s. Oh, you think? Oh, I'm thinking of the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker, yeah. Did Jesus you watch that Christ. shit at all? Uh, I, I mean, I saw the preview of it. Like, I remember. I watched the whole fucking thing. That guy was nuts. And yeah. it was crazy the, how dumb the police were. And and it, it it's weird. It, the, so, without DNA evidence, there's really nothing you could do. They're like, ah, oh, he did it again. And the guy wore gloves again. Uh, you, what, what, he could, what can you do? And in Los Angeles, you know, an eyewitness is like, oh, he looks like this. There's thousands of people that look exactly like you here in Los Angeles, you know? Yeah, especially now. Right. And even in the mid 80s. So speaking of which, you were alive during that time. Where were you in the summer of 1985? Shit myself. Uh, I was like fucking so one say, year old. So you say. You you know what it could be though, like maybe maybe Ted Cruz really is a Zodiac killer, and he's my father and just never told me, and took me around Los Angeles for the summer, and then dropped me off with a nice sweet caring couple in Iowa, and then uh, we went our separate ways. But if that is true, that means I'm due Canadian citizenship, <laughs> <laughs> because Ted Cruz is Canadian, uh, and probably the Zodiac killer. Which same thing, it happened when he was a baby. But how do we know? That he was actually born in 1970 or whatever. And how do we know you were born in 1984? There's no way to know. Really, you, you can't measure age based on what year you were born in. You should measure age by how many years you got left. And for guys like us, it's less than average for people our physical age. Yeah. Real Realistically, we're like 50. Yeah, I mean, if I make it to 60, I'll With be all surprised. all the drinking and... Well, I, well, on that, yeah, but I don't kill myself before then too. So there's oh, this that again in there. Uh, this no, again. no, no, not like I like not. I'm depressed. I'm like, well, fuck. I've done this about sixty years. That seems like a good amount of time. This again. What? <laughs> no, I'm just busting balls. <laughs> uh, yeah, the way I see it, there's no proof that you're not the Zodiac killer because this is Trump's America. Oh wait, we just shifted. So I guess I need evidence now. And I guess you being born in 1984 means it didn't happen. Fucking lucky. Yeah. Yeah. That checks you out this time. That Brandon you, Collins. Can't keep Trump's name out of your mouth either. You love that big fat T I, coming out of your mouth. I mean. And going in. Uh, I mean, I do enjoy the odd uh, Trump joke. I don't obsess over it, but you don't need to yeah. mansplain it to me or anything. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. If I hear that word one more fucking time. That's the dumbest shit I have ever heard in my life. What, that, mansplaining? Yeah, well, and it's always some... Isn't fun. that the concept of a male podcast? Uh, well, I mean, if anybody's listening, yeah, but we're mansplaining to dudes, too. I mean, Jesus Christ, our demographics, which we'll get to those in a bit. But, uh, yeah, so I, right now I'm mansplaining to, like, a shitload of other dudes and a handful of women. Now, if they want to get their tits in a twist all over that, you know, and their panties in a wad, and, uh, you know, the other thing the broads do, like, go ahead. Oh, but, God. But to, like, if I come at you with factual information, regardless of your fucking gender, whether it's man, woman, whether it's Z, whether it's they, Zim, Zer, Pink Lamborghini, I don't give a shit. Like, facts are facts. So if I explain something, regardless of your gender... And your response, rather than responding to the information that I just gave and just saying, oh, are you really mansplaining this to me right now? Fucking happened on Twitter the other night. And it's always some frumpy broad and, like who's fucking 40 years old, probably going through menopause, so she's like extra fucking moody. And it, yeah, them 40-year-olds are ghouls, right, Brandon? Jesus fucking Christ. Now, yeah. There's nothing wrong with 40-year-olds. There's nothing wrong with women. No, it's just those those particular women. What's the difference? So now they're broads. Well, now so at least that, you didn't call them bitches. Uh, well, there, there's okay. So that's the thing. So any woman can like shift it, it, at any point depending on her mood or temperament, and you know if they're on the rag. Good luck with that one. But oh. so generally, like a broad is someone like that. There, it's like the female version of a crusty old guy. You know, they're just fucking set in their ways and they're miserable pieces of shit which they take out on everybody else 
uh, you know, the, the, the type of chicks, you know, been road hard, uh, put away wet, sitting at the end of the bar, smoking their Virginia Slims 100s, you know, waiting for 20 year olds to come in that they can blow in their car in the parking lot. That's what, it, that, to me, that's a fucking broad. You have a lady, very classy, very graceful. Uh, you know, she's dignified. She speaks well. She's intelligent. I love ladies. Those are the ones that you send 2 a.m. messages to that say, hey, lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, it, 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 it's all in the phrasing. You call them lady first. You already set the tone. Hey, lady, uh, why are you not sitting on my face right now? That's true, but that's that's not uh, specific to men to women. Whenever a girl sends me a text or a message that says, hey, boy, yeah, I know what the fuck that means. Yeah. You know, which but, is weird because it's different if they said, hey, man. Yeah. It, you know. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and maybe that's one of your tranny friends, you know, who's a dude. Ah, oh, Brady, bring it up. Oh. oh, gross. Yeah. The dump truck's going off the rails here. Yeah. So anyhow. So but that's yeah. why our demographic is probably 90% men. I just checked this shit out. So our demographics are on Apple Music and shit is like uh, 90% men. And on YouTube, it's 80% men. And now I can see why. You know, you say shit like that. Uh, you probably drive the women away. Oh, Christ. I haven't even finished as soon my as they dissertation hear your on women yet. I mean, the, the various uh, classifications. But we'll save that for another episode. I will sit down and explain everything to you. I'll, I'll mansplain it. <laughs> so all you ladies know exactly what category you fit in. You're welcome, by the way. By the way, mansplaining is when a man typically to a woman... Explains, explains fucking anything in a condescending tone. <laughs> no, the, I, I said that on a, uh, I, I retweeted something by Mark Hayes. Shout out to him. He was on the podcast uh, with a person of color, gay woman. Yeah. Anyways, someone uh, accused him of mansplaining. And that's why I just replied to that being like mansplaining is when a man. <laughs> explains. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, way to go. Dump truck, Dave. Oh, Anyways, all right, we're gonna wrap this up here. We got eight minutes left. So, all right, well, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna move into the mailbag now because, uh, being that I'm a man of the people, I, I, I like to get the people involved in our show. And uh, <laughs> the mailbag that's what we got to change it to the M A L E bag. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what the broads have been calling us for a long time, anyways. Um, so John in Texas wants to know, uh, now that restaurants in LA are closed, uh, where's your favorite place to go to eat? Well, uh, fucking John in Texas. So he doesn't have to worry about shit closing down. Oh yeah. He can go to Billy Bob's, uh, you know, house of fucking, uh, the wings and, uh, lard in a bowl or whatever the fuck they eat down there. Um, there really is nowhere to eat in LA. See in California, it's divided up a little bit because yeah. there are certain counties like orange County. They have bars open because the sheriff there was like, we're not enforcing this, but announced it. They're like, hey, we're not going to enforce it. Yeah. And so bars were like, cool, we'll stay open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there are people, I've seen it with my own eyes in Newport, where uh, they're doing uh, indoor drinking, you oh, know? Yeah. Good for them. No. Uh, I mean, but yeah, anyway, bad. so where do we COVID. eat w during, the, during the end times? Well, typically... I think last time we hung out, we went to like Vons and got sandwiches because really that's all you can do. Yeah, and, and they're fucking uh, drier than eighty year old pussy. Oh, it's gang so bang gross. Night at the nursing you have to home. throw the bread away, dude. It's so gross. Yeah, you, you you know how you can get those giant subs for like eight bucks? Yeah, the bread is useless. It's like an actual football. Yeah, uh, you know the thing I really noticed is like if you go for takeout, uh you realize really quickly how expensive some of these places are here in LA and like mm -hmm. no offense mm -hmm. to them. I understand, man, you gotta, you gotta pay rent. Rent's been getting jacked up gentrification and all that shit, but sorry, man. Uh, my wages have not kept up over yeah, the years. It's the so, blockbuster theory, right? So you're like, all right, well, if I'm just going to get takeout anyhow, I, I might as well go somewhere that's, you know, fucking cheap and easy. Mm -hmm. And then you realize how disgusting some of this shit is. You're like, Oh fuck, man! There's nothing. There's a subway there, I guess, man. What well, What do you want? Eh, it's It's not so much what I want. I just need food, and you guys are here. That's uh, what no, subway is. Yeah, that that's, before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Subway it, is like, oh, it's available. It's nearby. 
I don't want to wait to go somewhere else. That's Subway. Yeah, it's another one of those pandemic lessons you really learned about yourself. You just went there because it existed. It was right. convenient to your life. You didn't enjoy it. Uh, probably like <laughs> anyone who's been married for more than like <laughs> two months. And the fucking thing about Subway is they specifically is they market themselves as like a healthy alternative. No, it isn't. Whenever they talk about, oh, Subway eat healthy, whatever, they're talking about like, okay, only get the vegetables. Yeah. No bread. No sauces. Right. So you basically have to say, okay, on my non existent sub, <laughs> I want lettuce. Just throw it in a bag. Yeah. And um, I'll eat it out of that. That's what that is. Whatever. Fuck that shit. All right, Brandon, we got a few minutes left. Five minutes. So. Uh, we introduced, we asked you guys, the audience, to give us a fuck, marry, kill. If you're unfamiliar with the concept, ooh, sounds kinky. Someone l- names, yeah, I didn't tell you about this, so we'll just see how this goes. <laughs> For once, I'm spearheading a segment. Uh, fuck, marry, kill is someone names three people, and you decide which one you want to fuck, which one you want to marry, which one you want to kill. All right. So 99 percent of your responses are dumb jokes. You people aren't funny. That's why you listen to us. That's what we're here for. Well, you know, I get it, but it's just, I hate the internet because it's all fucking dumb. But (laughs) we have a woman named Spinsters for Bernie's Mittens. Oh. Who said, fuck, marry, kill, Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, Ed Gain. Brandon, what do you got? Oh, shit. Okay, Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Um. I, I would probably fuck Ted Bundy because he is a good looking dude. Like he's the type of guy that you would want to have fun with. Um, but you really don't want to settle down. Like that's that's a that's for the fun period of your lives. Mm-hmm. Uh Jeffrey Dahmer cooks, so I might have to marry him. <laughs> and uh and then uh Ed Gain, sorry, buddy. Uh you just don't bring any uh, enough to the table. You're uh you know, your uh, pussy lip lampshades are uh, are quite nice, but man needs to fuck and a man needs to eat, and those are already taken up, so you're dead. All right. What about you? You know what's weird is uh, I have to go with the same thing based on the fact that Jeffrey Dahmer cooks. Like, that's the, that's, that's the end of that argument. There is no other th- – there's no other way to go about that one. You win. <laughs> yes. All right. Fuck, marry, kill. Tiger King, Bill Cosby, Donald Trump. Uh, well, I mean, the, Bill Cosby's already spoken for. It's like the meme says, look, either we're fucking or I'm fucking. So <laughs> I'm getting it one way or the other. And if I'm getting it, I'd rather be passed out and not feel it. Um, Donald Trump. Uh, God, man, I'd have to marry that guy uh, just because just for the fucking shits and giggles, man. Just going around having Trump by my side. You know, watching the angry liberals and just smiling at them and waving, and they can't do a goddamn thing about it because they'll go to prison for the rest of their lives. Uh, and, uh, I mean, Christ, Joe Exotic, he's probably going to die in prison at this point, so might as well kill him anyways. He ain't fucking doing nothing. I like your answer there. I, I have a very similar answer, but okay, uh, for the same reasons that you described, I would marry tiger king joe exotic because he goes after you know strapping young men like myself um and since he's already in jail anyway i don't gotta deal with that shit and, you know i get to hang out with some big cats that he had cool marry joe exotic that makes sense because of the fucking cats but you yeah. have way too many teeth and you need to lose a couple pounds oh wait no 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 i screw that up i wouldn't marry him i'd <laughs> fuck him i'd fuck him you'd fuck him for his kitties i'd fuck him because yeah, that's what he's after. He's not. He doesn't marry these dudes, right? Or he does? Yeah, he did. Yeah, ah, yeah. I'm fucking this whole thing. Up. Yeah, Where? yeah, yeah. Okay. Just fucking harem. Start again. I would fuck Joe Exotic. Okay. Get close to them big giant kitties. Uh, I will give you this. He's been in prison, so that prison sex is going to be wild, man. He hasn't had a conjugal visit. But that's yet. what I'm saying. He's in prison. I don't got to deal with that shit. So whatever. Yeah. You already bought him. Dave. I would definitely marry Trump because I could be one of his wives that gets all that money. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, he's not, he's not fucking his wife. You know, they, they, they stopped fucking years ago. So yeah, I could be one of those wives. Marry Trump. Kill Bill Cosby. What's up? Fair enough. All right. And the last one that we're going to pick, because it's just a never ending slew of garbage diarrhea. It's from our pal, Jimmy V. Hyde, 
Oh. He's going to open for me when I hit up Michigan. What's up, D-City? Whatever you call it there. I was in Ann Arbor. Felt like I was going to get shot. But Detroit was cool. Uh, so he says, LaRusso Lawrence Crease. Now, if you're unfamiliar, that means uh, Daniel LaRusso. Johnny yeah. and Crease from Cobra Kai. Yeah. So and, and who's your pick, Brandon? And, and the Crease was uh, Johnny Sensei, right? Yeah, the, the bad the guy. Dude. Um. God, uh, Larusso. He seems like he would be annoying as shit. I tweeted out the other day that Daniel Larusso is the Zach Morris of Cobra Kai. He he's like always painted as like the ambitious, smart, uh, you know, model citizen, but really he's a piece of shit who's just scheming to like make his own life better. Uh, so I would probably have to kill him. Um, damn. Yeah. Uh, the old dude, I guess I'd fuck him. He seems like, uh, it'd be fun to wrangle him around a little bit, try to get him down. Um, you know, I like the older ones anyways. And then, uh, you know, I guess Mary Johnny, you know, he likes to drink. We can probably hang out. We got something in common. Close down the bar. Good point. Good point. All right. I would go with, uh, Mary LaRusso, Daniel LaRusso, cause he owns a car dealership in Woodland Hills. That whole fucking show is about saying obscure references to the valley. We live in Reseda, where they separately, of course, but we we're in Reseda, where that show takes place. Everything is about like, oh, we went to Winneka. Like they'd never say that on any other show. Um, yeah, I go to Winneka. So I'd marry him, shit. get in with that dealership. I'd fuck Johnny Lawrence because he—that's his whole thing. He's the attractive guy, right? Like even in the originals. Yeah. And I kill the fucking old man Crease. All right. All right. That's our. <laughs> That's our <laughs> shitty little show. If you made it this far, congratulations. That's an act of charity so kind. You deserve a tax break. We are the Valley Boys. Make sure you subscribe to us on the YouTube, on the Twitters, on the MySpace, on the Grinder, Wherever you're online, we're there too. Buy us a coffee. That's buymeacoffee.com slash valleyboyspod. You can give us five bucks. You can tell us what drink we have to get with it, and we will fucking do it. We are the Valley Boys from Reseda, California. Signing the fuck out. Brandon, say goodnight. Good night, Bottom Dave. I'm not Bottom Dave. <laughs> <laughs>